21 to 13. A conference record winning streak. Playoff positioning. The and whole a enchilada. A lot of stuff hanging out there right now for Montana. I'll tell you what, and a lot of pride and everything else that comes with it on the line. 21 to 13. John Edwards brought down. And he's brought down hard. Agatupu Sagapulafele. Very good. And John didn't have a chance there. Sagapulatele brings Edwards down, and it's fourth and 15. The Grizzlies have to punt. Spencer at his own goal line. We need you now, right now. We need Mark Spencer to get off a good one. Decent punt. Takes a Montana bounce. Good coverage there. Tyler Peterson, 28. Trey Young and uh, wisely Steve Shannon uh, let that one go because uh, that would have been dangerous to try to field that. So Spencer comes through on his part. Now the Montana defense has got to tighten the screws and get the ball back. 53 yards on the punt for Spencer. Tim Walsh has seen this program go from Division II Took, this, uh, took the Vikings to the playoffs his first three years here. Made the tough transition to the one AA level. Having to uh, watch his scholarships go up as the funding increases. And now they've got a chance to dethrone the national champs and knock them off of their conference winning streak. Man in motion is Muhammad. Up over the 30-yard line. Fuquay. Has been held in check tonight. 18 carries and only 31 yards, well below his averages, but yeah, that they've done enough other things. Though. I mean, you know, Wood has picked up the slack. That dictates to, uh, you know, less than two yards a carry. Obviously, Montana, I think his touchdown run was a two-yarder. Uh, has a couple receptions, but Justin Wood, the quarterback, Jay Hamilton, the receiver, have been the killer so far tonight for the Montana Grizzlies uh, working their magic for Portland State. Again to Fuquay. Lance Spencer brings him down along with Joel Robinson. And the Vikings have been satisfied to do this, play ground control, and then uh, just are deadly on third down conversions. Uh, I think they're about 75%, and you're going to win a lot of football games if you can uh, convert to 75% of the time on third down conversion, and that's just what they seem to be doing. So the Montana Grizzlies looking for a huge stop here, get the ball back, and but maybe try to keep a little momentum on their side. Third and seven. Levin and Jackson split out. They go to Fuquay. Kevin Edwards dances with them. And then Fuquay turns the corner. Close to a first down. He's going to be short. Yeah, he stepped out. He actually had looked like he'd made it past her, but he must have stepped out, a lot out of, on the line and stepped out of bounds when he tried to make that extra surge. Excellent pressure by Montana. Right on the money by Wood, and here's where this speed is scary. Kevin Edwards really made a nice play to slow him down, and he must have stepped out of bounds a couple yards before that. Edwards did just enough. Vikings going to punt. Eddie Pazos from his own 25. Levander Seegers crouched down at the 24 of Montana. Good punt. High punt. Penalty flags on the play. I don't believe anyone from Montana touched the ball. No, they didn't. And so either it's going to be downed and spotted at the five-yard line where Portland State picked it up or... It's going to be brought up due to some, due to a penalty. Take another look at it. Well, and he knocked. Well, that's a push in the back right there is what it is. Yeah. The officials talking it over. Uh, Bruce Palmer is our white hat this evening. Working with Lou Tosti, Tim Messery, Jeff Robinson, Kevin Klesner, Robert Holloway and Bob Rowling are the officials this evening. Want to say hi to a bunch of Grizzly fans watching tonight's game at Lumpy's in Salt Lake City. 
Tim Walsh can taste it. They're so close right now. Non-contact interference with the opportunity to catch a kick. On the kicking team, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So that's a halo violation is what it is. That used to be a five-yard penalty. Now this year it's a 10-yard penalty. And what a break for Montana. Yeah, they pick up 10 yards on the, on the penalty, as you said, Tom. And, they, you know, starting at the 35 is a better deal. The more yardage you can chalk off, the better. And you see Walsh there talking it over the official. Uh, too late now, Tim. Let it go. Edwards brings his troops to the line. He's got two tight ends. They go to J.R. Waller. Waller across the 40. Waller could go down the right sideline. Cuts it back inside. Now outside again. First down. Now near the 25-yard line. Nice hesitation move by J.R. Waller. Knew he probably couldn't get past the, the, the secondary because they had the angle on him. Tried to do a little stutter step, pick up a few more yards. But uh, here you see the speed of J.R. Waller. He can crank into that extra gear without barely pressing the clutch in. And he outran his uh, blockers a little there, which I guess was hard to argue with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two tight ends again. Edwards to John Talmadge. 20 yard line oh and he just about popped it for six as the defender on the play slipped down and Talmadge found himself face to face with the end zone for a split second before help came well there's a lot of time left in this football game 12 17 to be exact and uh last time montana played here was an overtime contest and uh you never know we're heading in that direction but there's still plenty of time and of course montana needs to get in the end zone as well timeout the officials are switching footballs and it's uh, chilled down a bit here in Portland at PGE Park uh, still very very pleasant evening for football here in the Pacific Northwest first and ten from the 15 Montana trails by eight Edwards buying some time gets a monster block from John Talmadge to pick up a few more yards boy Talmadge put all of his six foot four inch frame into that one Edwards picks up a couple of yards, uh, doesn't make any mistakes, and the Grizzlies now second and eight. Tough yards, very tough yards. Took, took a couple good hits there, but he did what a smart quarterback does. He eats the ball and doesn't force it into coverage. Ben Wynn lined up in the backfield along with J.R. Waller. And that play just never really developed. It's going to be third down and about eight for the Grizzlies. And Montana may be setting up a play. I'm not sure here, but the, what they like to do there is hand off to Waller, although it's a pitch to Waller going right, and he'll throw back to Edwards on the left. They used this play, Montana, a couple times in, in the past. Haven't used it in recent history, to my knowledge, although down third down here, you never know. That's kind of risky. I like John Talmadge up top. Edwards wants to go that way. Now he's got to get out of trouble. And he takes it down close to first down yardage, but he's going to be about a half yard shy. So here comes the decision. Well, with 11 minutes left, do you take three points? You or do you what go Montana for it? Montana did, Tommy. Right before halftime, three seconds to go. Quick snap to John Edwards and uh, stopped short of a touchdown and right now they're going to huddle up talk about it and uh, and burn a timeout a big play coming up the Grizzlies are going to talk it over they trail the Vikings 21 to 13 with 10 45 left well it looks like Joe Glenn wants the three points although let's remember the Grizzlies do run a pretty effective fake field goal although I don't think they're going to do it here Oliver the holder. Snap is good, hold is good, and the kick is good. Well, Snyder shows a little nerve there, bangs it through. 21 to 16, the Grizzlies now. Back in the game, wanna send a thanks to all of our sponsors, statewide sponsors for today's game. Without their support, our broadcast would not be possible. Lucky Lil's and Magic Diamond Casino is a division of Town Pump across Montana. 
Blue Cross Blue Shield of Montana, the Montana Wood Products Association, Universal Athletic Service, CarQuest Auto Parts Stores, and your Montana Ford Stores. Thank you for your partnership. Is for the second year in a row, all Montana games are televised one way or another across the Treasure State. That is a great deal for Montana fans and the Montana football program. And really, you know, you wonder on that 10:43 to go in this football game. That really, that a kick and a field goal there takes pressure off you because instead of you, not only you have to pick up the first down, you got to score. Then you got to score a two-point conversion. So those points were pretty huge at that point. And of course, we talked about the, uh, Chris Snyder. Ten of his last 12 now, very, very efficient. And who knows, the way this one's coming, it may come down to either number 30 or uh, number 27 or 29, excuse me, uh, to one way or the other to maybe win this baby. Grizzlies go 70 yards in six plays that time in a minute 50, and Snyder from with the field goal. He's three of three tonight. And this one's coming out, look out! What a play, guess who? Missoula native Brett Myers. Yeah, Brent Myers, and he's been bothered with a foot injury, unfortunately, but he's still pretty darn effective in that kickoff coverage. Wow, Hashim Hall from Big Sky High School, and of course Brent actually started the first game of the season at the nickelback position, uh, but been, been hampered with injuries, unfortunately. Big hit for Montana, a long way for the Vikings to go now to, to answer that three points by the Montana offense. Hashim Hall brought it out, Myers made him pay. I formation, they go to Fuquay. Dave DeCoit got him at the line of scrimmage. And you know, if you're Mon and Fuquay's limping, Fuquay is limping, saying, hey, put somebody else in here. What a huge injury that would be if Ryan Fuquay could not return. And you know, if you're a Montana fan right now, you just expect to see Montana come back and win this game because they just have a knack for never giving up, never dying. And, of course, Justin Wood has been very, very sharp. You see Fuquay there being helped off the field. Big injury on PSU. Joe Rubin, a freshman out of Tacoma, into the ball game at the tailback spot. And that one's dropped. Salim Muhammad over the middle had it right on the number, and he dropped it. Wouldn't have been enough for a first down, but it would have given him a little breathing room, and now it's third and ten. Now he actually only would have picked up a couple yards. I think it was on the ten-yard line. Uh, very good coverage. Joel Robinson, that's Adam Holt, 50, coming up there for the stop. And, you know, because Fuquay just went out with that injury, uh, you've got to think uh, Portland State much more likely to put the football up and uh, in this situation with third and ten. Staggered eye backfield behind Justin Wood. They pick up the blitz. Wood has time. Out to Antonio Bryant, and Bryant could score. Here comes Dave DeCoit to make a saving touchdown tackle. Oh, boy. Kevin Edwards got turned around. And a big play, huge play by Portland State. Third and 10, Montana has got him pinned in on their own eight, nine yard line and, and Wood just on the money. Antonio Jackson just made what could turn out to be the biggest play of the game. Not only that, you put yourself in field goal position now for Portland State on the 22. That's a 39 yard field goal just from right there. Field goal puts you back up by eight. 21 to 16, 924 left. Up the middle with Joe Rubin. The freshman who still is in the game as uh, take a look at the sidelines underneath us here and Fuquay is being worked on. Looks like they're trying to rewrap his right ankle. So for the time being, Fuquay out of the ball game as is Jelani Harrison, the Montana back. Uh, Jelani got hurt in the first half and he's on the bench with his foot elevated as well. So a couple of backs banged up, but right now the Vikings thinking about putting more points on the board. Two tight ends in the game. They give to Rubin, not a whole lot of room. That sets up a third and five for the Vikings. Portland State satisfied to run the clock, run the ball, get in field position, and let their guy, Cahill, 
Willis, who is a pretty efficient field goal kicker. Not great range, but very efficient. 10 of 15 with a long of 39 this season. And another third down situation. Deontay Bryant split up top. Jesse Levin and Jackson down to this side. Wood slips, and that is a costly slip. Trey Young coming on with the pressure. Wood falls down. Cahal Willis, 25, the field goal kicker. Trotting on there, a 25-yard line. Uh, about a 42-yarder, somewhere in there. 42-yarder, I think. Help me out on that one, Tom. I might be <laughs> slow on my math. Uh, I wasn't a math major either. And uh, I barely passed the one math class I took in college. There you go, 740 and counting. Big field goal attempt right now for the Vikings. K. Hall Willis, a knuckleball. That's no good. And, and that ball might have been tipped. I want to take another look at that. I'm not sure, but the way it came out, Dave, unless he really squibbed it. Well, it definitely came out like a knuckleball. And oh, he just got a death look from yeah, Tim Walsh. Tim Walsh was coach. not happy with that. And, uh, you know, I couldn't tell there. You know, maybe it didn't. It just could have been a kind of a knuckleball. Well. Either way, it's a miss. 21 to 16. Is it that time? Johnny Montana, John Edwards, 23 and 1 as a starter, hoping to take his team the distance here and get, get a touchdown. And I just put the curse on him. He slipped, Boy, setting up. What a costly, costly uh, fall by the senior quarterback. Uh, looking downfield, and it'll be second 15. And what do you say on that? That's just bad luck. I say you jinxed him on that one, Dave. I'm not going to say another word now. He just tried to set up and slip, plain and simple, and lost ooh, seven, eight yards. Montana, second and 18. From their own 16-yard line. Now Bruce Palmer has issue with something going on. Well, switching football. We're going to switch the ball. Well, there's 6.57 to go here at PGE Park. We've talked about everything that's riding on this game. And it Ooh. comes down to just under seven minutes. Here it is. Buckle up. Talmadge in motion. He's got Connor Malloy in the flat. Goes downfield to number two. And Talmadge wants a flag. No call. Joe yeah. Glenn is hot. Joe Glenn is sprinting down to the official to plead his case. I think what they're saying is that Talmadge was turned around and he wasn't going to catch that ball anyway. Well, he was. He did turn the wrong way. And oh, yet, boy. And yet uh, you could have flagged that. The official could have flagged that. Did not. And uh, now Montana third and a bunch here. 6.45 to go in this football game. Dane Oliver, Levander Seegers, the wide outs to the near side. John Talmadge split to the right. Encroachment. So that It's going to be a call uh, right here. So that'll third make it. Third and what? Yep. Uh, 14. Okay. Third and 14. So that helps a little. Helps in, in the sense that Montana needs a little less time to throw the Contact football. Contact offside on the pattern. defense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Bruce Palmer with the call. I got Tupu Saga Potele. Got going a little early. Third and 14. J.R. Waller, the lone back. Here comes the blitz. The Grizzlies pick it up. Dane Oliver wide open. First down and more. Up to the 45. And of course, Dane Oliver made that huge catch right before halftime, but got stopped at the one inch line. Another big catch by the junior from Monmouth, Oregon. Wide open. Sat down in the zone. Caught the ball. Took her upfield. Now the Grizz go to tight end. Back to the ground game. J.R. Waller met in the backfield by Mr. Saga Pultele. Agatupu Saga Pultele with a big play. Enter the game with seven tackles for losses. 
one of the leaders on the Portland State defense, and uh, this had no chance. JR just uh, took his lumps, and Waller hung on to the ball, making it about a second and 12 now for the Montana offense. Tate Hancock back in the game. Talmadge as well on top. Connor Malloy's open in the flat. Edwards has got him. Across the 50. Hang on to it, big guy. And he's out of bounds. Drop the yard marker because uh, they don't want the Connor diving into that. It'll be about four yards to go for the first down. Nice tackle by Portland State. Connor, a tough man to bring down with that size. And it's one of those old big third down conversion attempts again for the Grizz. Edwards. John Talmadge, first down Montana. And Talmadge just continues to be a go-to guy. Enter the game as Montana's second lead receiver. 27 catches coming into the game. He's got eight right now, so 35 catches now for John Talmadge on the season. And uh, they'll continue to get bigger as this game progresses. 5.38 left on the clock. Montana trails by five. The gift to J.R. Waller. Cuts it up. Minimal gain. Maybe two yards. JR with no running room there. Lavander Seegers tried to make a block, missed it, and uh, I don't know if it would have sprung the thing. Might have picked up a few more yards. Uh, the Grizz offense in a double tight now. It's go time for this Montana offensive line. This is it right here. You want to win five straight conference championships, you got to do it over the next five minutes. John Edwards throws to Willie Walden, and it's almost picked off, falls to the turf. It'll be third down for Montana. And they're lucky to still have the ball. I think Montana did get a break there. Uh, Johnny Edwards threw that into double coverage. Threw it behind Willie Walden. And, of course, Willie a big target. 6'7", 275. Another third down opportunity for the Grizz. Levander Seegers is in one-on-one -on -one coverage on the near side. Might want to watch out for that. The Vikings showing blitz. Now they back off. Edwards is going to have to run for it. And he's close, but he's going to be short by a couple of yards. And if you're in Montana right now, the ball's on the 35-yard line. It's going to be fourth and two. I think this is the time you, you call one of those plays that uh, you can get a first down on. I think you've got to go for it now with 438 and counting. It's the first fourth down conversion attempt by either team this evening. Two tight ends in the game. Walden and Connor Malloy. J.R. Waller had some problems here in Edwards. It's getting loud in PGE Park. Here it is. John Edwards has got to run for it. He's not even close. The Vikings are going to take over, and John Edwards took a major hit. He gets up, but it's Viking ball. Really not sure who he was looking at here. Good pressure by Portland State. I want to say that Willie Walden was open. For a second, Edwards decided to tuck it and run. Took quite a hit there, too. Boy, oh, boy. That's Kevin Haston. And now uh, Portland State needs to try to get a few first downs and put this one away. Easier said than done. Montana has two timeouts left, and that's going to help. Wrapped up in the backfield, Lance Spencer made the play on Joe Rubin. As Ryan Fuquay is nowhere to be found, he's still out of the ball game. And Montana, with two timeouts left in this football game, they're going to hang on to those as long as they can. But, of course, right now, the injury to Ryan Fuquay has slowed down the offense a bit, maybe put a little more pressure on Wood. But how anxious are you to put the ball up with a five-point lead, three and a half minutes to go? Tim Hester lined up in the backfield along with Joe Rubin. And Wood with an audible. Wood wants to throw the ball. He goes deep, overshot his intended receiver who had gotten a step. 
Jesse Levin had broken away. That's a big play for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's incomplete. Number two, stops, stops the, the clock. clock. Yeah, and, and Levin was open. And once again, Justin Wood, like John Edwards, showing a lot of toughness, uh, standing in the pocket, took a good hit right after he delivered that. He's taking a lot of good hits, but hanging in there. And with Fuquay out, uh, once again, I, I think Wood more likely to put the ball up because uh, his go-to guys is on the bench with, uh, with an ankle injury or some type of a leg injury. Precarious situation here for the Vikings. You want to get the first down, but you don't want to risk an interception. Three wide. Two in the backfield. Here comes the heat. Flags all over the place. We're going to have a holding call against the Vikings. And you almost want to take it because of field position, and yet it's fourth down. So Montana probably refused this because it'll be fourth and ten, and they want to get the ball back as soon as possible. No doubt about it. Yeah, they'll, they'll refuse this one for sure. Yeah, you see one of the players there. I think that's uh, Lance Spencer saying, no, punt this thing. Holding on the offense. Penalty is declined. You got it. Fourth down. Call on PSU. And, and you can bet that Eddie Pazos is not going to give Lavander Seegers much to work with. He's going to try to not do that anyway. Yeah, Lavander's been pretty limited so far the evening in punt returns. One for seven yards. Standing at his own 26-yard line. If there was ever a time uh, using all for the LV to dazzle, it would be right now. They can take this down to about 244 before they have to snap it. They're going to snap it earlier than that. High spiraling kick. Seegers takes that his own 26-yard line. I, I'm not sure if that was another halo call or not. But because in most cases, you think Lamander may fair catch that. That was an excellent punt. Good hang time. That's, that's, that's a dangerous play by number one to not fair catch that. And that's the call. In all honesty. So a halo infraction. And again, that's 10, 10 yards now. We'll take a timeout. 21 to 16. The Grizzlies take over with 240 left in the game. Let's get this fourth quarter trivia out of the way before things get too messy. 1979 saw Gonzaga leave the Big Sky Conference. What school replaced them? We'll have the answer in a few plays. Montana first and ten, four wide. Edwards going deep down the right side for John Talmadge, and he throws it out of, way, uh, out of bounds. And here's the scenario with 2.34 to go. Montana does have two timeouts remaining. Down five, 21-16. Ryan Fuquay, the star halfback for Portland State, left a couple series ago with some type of leg or ankle injury. Um, Portland State struggled a bit offensively since, but uh, the University of Montana now uh, running out of options, running out of time, got to get some first downs, got to get in the end zone, need a touchdown to pull this one out here in Portland. Second and 10. Grizzlies pick up the pressure. John Talmadge has it, and he has a first down for the Grizzlies. And this is the huge thing about college football that differentiates it from pro. Time, you get a timeout, or you get a brief timeout when they move the change, that first down. It can really add a lot of valuable seconds on to the, to the tail end of a football game. Clock rolling now at 2.23 and counting. J.R. Waller lined up behind Montana. Looked like Portland State jump, but no flag. Complete to John Talmadge, and he gets out of bounds. Good play. You know, and really with two timeouts, you, you can still run the football. You don't probably want to run it a lot, but just to keep him honest, and with the J.R. Waller, he had a huge run earlier in this football game. He's racked up 150-plus yards running the football at about seven yards a pop. J.R. Waller been very successful tonight. So that's one option you might look at. But, of course, Montana uh, still has to move the ball about, oh, 43 yards, 44 yards to score. 2 11 left on the clock. Edwards, again, they pick up the heat. Now he's got to run. Flag on the play, though. And I'm afraid we might have a hold on the Grizzlies. That's kind of the area where the flag was thrown. Yep. Let's answer that trivia question. How about right now? 
After Gonzaga left the big sky, what school replaced them? Start with an E. Starts with an N. Oh, Nevada. You got oh. it. Eastern, when did Eastern Washington come in there? I thought you were going to help me out and give me these trivias. <laughs> You're making me look bad. Of course, Nevada Reno left the league and moved up to 1A football as well. They left a while back, as did Boise State and the University of Idaho. And uh, costly penalty for the Montana Grizzlies, a 10-yarder. On the so offense. instead of second and what, three or second four, three. Three play second down. it's uh, second, 13, or 14. So. 205 left. Two timeouts left for the Grizzlies. And they're going to restart the play clock, and now we're set to go. Seegers and Oliver to the near side. Slip screen, Lavander, Seegers, and oh boy, what a play. Number 48 came in there and made a play, Byron Woods. And that could have gone for a bit, too. It looked like there was pretty decent blocking set up. And just fires himself through there. And the play clock operator here should be fired. That's the fourth time tonight they've had to stop and tell him to reset the 25-second play clock. Yeah. Here we go. 21 to 16. A buck 38 left of the game. Third and 15 for Montana. Edwards with time. Dane Oliver, first down. Are you kidding me? Dane Oliver has just been huge with some big, big catches, and that might have been the biggest one so far. John Edwards was excellent time. Stood in there, stood in the pocket tough, and uh, knocking on the door, Tommy. That's a senior quarterback right there, Dave, is what that is. Standing in the pocket, season, winning streak on the line, and he finds the open man. Four wide. Flag on the play. This is going to be a procedure call against Montana. I think someone jumped. Yep. Jumped early on the left side yep. of it. And, and man, it, I don't know what the record for penalties is, but... I know they're not approaching that, but they sure have a bunch. Montana Grizzlies with, I think, 14 penalties now. And, you know, at this point of the game, maybe it's not that big of a deal. They're going to have to air it out anyways. A minute, 14 to go. Montana still hanging on to those two timeouts. So they do have those options available if they can't get out of bounds or get a first down. How about a draw play of J.R. Waller? 115 to go. Now the clock runs at 114. Edwards across the middle. Almost picked oh, off, but it's man. not. Oh, man. Oh, man. And the Portland State fans, you can hear them in unison. Just like us up here, dodged a bullet, overthrown. I think it was Dane Oliver who John Edwards had hit three times before going over the middle. Just overthrew it. And 46, Oliver bumped into him. Three different Portland State players have a chance. Montana with new life, second down, 15 from the 35. We've got exactly 64 seconds remaining. Tate Hancock in the game. He's the third receiver on the inside up top. Talmadge the far flanker. Seeger's down here by himself. In the middle is Dane Oliver. Edwards comes this way to LV, slips on the play. What's the call? Completion. That was a great catch by LeVan Sears. He slipped, laid out. You could see that he had the, his arms underneath that thing. And now Montana with first down on the 11-yard line. They actually can get a first down. Here you see Edwards, timing pattern. Lavander, arms underneath. And the Grizz burn one of their two remaining timeouts. If you leave us now... It wouldn't be smart. We'll be back after this. 21 to 16. The Grizzlies looking to go in and to go on top. Grizzlies at the 11 yard line. 57 ticks left. I like a swing pass to J.R. Waller to the right side. A lot of pressure coming. Waller, left side. Dave Guppy, you called it. Okay, but I called the wrong side. But there's a play. J.R. Waller. So effective catching the football. Montana, be careful now. Don't get a celebration penalty. <laughs> the 
Edwards to J.R. Waller for six points. And the Grizzlies take the lead. They're up by one. So 22 to 21. And they're going to go for two. And you've got to go for two. Yeah. And J.R. Waller in the old hometown. Quite of this crowd, but there's still 51 seconds to go. This is college football. Who knows? Jump ball, John Talmadge. Two points for number two. And that was a big play. That's a three-point difference. That's a big play. Even though Cahill Willis missed a field goal earlier, still Montana with it gives itself a great shot there. And now you've got to contain one of the most explosive kickoff returners in the country. And, and you probably don't want to squib it to give him great field position. Here's a replay of Waller's touchdown. The Vikings brought the house. They sold out on the blitz. All John Edwards had to do was buy himself enough time to get the pass off. And oh boy, what a return for the hometown boy to put his team up. And 75, Corey Proctor. I don't know if he made a block, but he was out, out, there, out there in the way. And there was no doubt what the Grizz were doing here. Going up top for Mr. Talmadge. Great, Ed Edwards put it up and oh. just go get it, you know? Great footwork. Great footwork by Talmadge. And now, I don't know if you squib it, but you might want to try to find a pocket and maybe not give this explosive returner, Hashim Hall, 28.8 average coming in, an opportunity to return this one. He, he is dangerous. And Hall has had a couple of big ones tonight. He brought one out from inside his own end zone out to the 35 earlier. And really, Chris Snyder's kickoffs are much more effective when he gets a little loft on them. They're not quite as deep but it gives that return team more time to get down there and make a stop. Tyler Peterson, Brett Myers, Joel Rosenberg, we need you now, boys. 51 ticks left, 24-21 Grizzlies, the squib kick. Fielded at the 10-yard line. Jefferson, Jefferson Heidelberger. Heidelberger. I left him out, so he made the play. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention his name, but well, I should have. Well, sure the heck it, yeah. should, because he's been great on special teams. Uh, 12, Brent Myers has been huge. Uh, Rosenberg, you know, a lot of those guys making big tackles. Uh, Tyler Peterson is a great special teams guy. So uh, uh, 80 yards for a touchdown. You don't know how close Cahal Willis needs to get there. He's got a 39-yarder this season. His long, 39 yards. Justin Wood, senior quarterback, would love nothing more than to bring this team down and score. Three wide. He wants to go left side. Here comes the heat brought down. Lance Spencer. And they're calling one of their timeouts. They got plenty. PSU has three timeouts. Lance Spencer. Makes the play. They were double teaming Tim Bush that time. Spencer came free and made the sack. Well, I don't know if you noticed on the replay, but Tim Bush, I think it was Tim Bush, got almost tackled in the play. Good, good really good push up front by the D-line. And, and, of course, you're not sure. You know, John Cale, we haven't mentioned his name a bunch. Uh, he had a huge game last week in that Southern Utah win. But, uh, with, you know, you're playing a, a three-man front. You, you've got, you, you know, your nickel, or your dime package, excuse me, with Kyle Scholl, 25 now in there. And, and uh, so you're, you're just trying to keep things in front of you right now. And those three guys up front, that's a lot of pressure on them with a the three-man rush. You may see number three, Trey Young, racing in on one of these on a, on a safety blitz, a defensive back blitz, though. Second and 16, 40 seconds left. Woods got time. Checks down, and Salim Muhammad fell to the turf of the 20-yard line. So they'll have to burn another timeout because he caught it inbounds and of course uh that that gives psu tom and it's huge one more time out with 29 seconds remaining johnny peoples is back in the game joel rosenberg is out so your corners are people and smith the coit and edwards are safeties trey young at the nickel and i wouldn't be surprised right now to, to put uh trey young in a blitz situation 
He was on the right side. Last, last play for the Montana Grizzlies. Of course, he's such an effective blitzer. That would put coverage uh, on the DeCoit. DeCoit would have that inside slot back. Trey's been, been shading him about five, seven yards deep. But, uh, of course, you know, you, you give up that play. But in this situation, you might be able to give up that five or seven yards to, to try to get that huge sack. And, of course, uh, this is a this is a two-play deal for the Vikings. It's third down, but, uh, you know, you're not going to punt the ball off with 29 ticks to go, Tom. Not with... Uh... Not in the situation. No, you won't. 29 left. A huge game for both clubs has come down to the last couple seconds. 21-24. Vikings got to go a long way. Wood airs it out. Looking for Jay Williams. He falls down. Picked off by Vernon Smith. And the Montana Grizzlies are going to hang oh, on yeah, you for gotta the victory. Go down. Good, good move. Vernon Smith with four interceptions on the year now. One of the Big Sky Conference leaders. And uh, there is, a, unfortunately, a Portland State player down in the field after that play. He got blocked by uh, a couple Grizzly players. Uh, Montana dodged the bullet. Here we go, Woods. It's, this is a Hail Mary pass. He's just hoping his, his, his big play receiver all night long, Jay Williams with two touchdown catches, slips, the ball's underthrown, and Vernon Smith gives Montana its 22nd consecutive win overall and uh, the training athletic training staff they looking at the injured player now i think it's right there on the tackle actually it was a player who made the tackle jackson antonio jackson i hope he's open you sure don't want you know this has been too great of a football game to get anyone hurt grizzlies now with their 23rd big sky conference win in a row and of course their 22nd overall and uh, I want to say the eight, 18th Big Sky Conference. No, it's, that's not true. A consecutive road conference win as we watch the replay one more time. Montana, hey, they just, Johnny Montana did it again. John Edwards goes to 24-1 and one as a starter and uh, just made big play after big play. The game breaker, Tommy, J.R. Waller, screenplay. Boy, oh, boy. In, the, in his hometown, and what an exciting thing for the several thousand Montana fans, 3,000 Montana fans that were here. Portland State, excellent, excellent football team. And uh, you can see why they were picked second. When they lost their main man, Fuquay, it really hurt them big time. They had to go more of a passing game. And I'm talking about Ryan Fuquay, who was injured earlier, yeah, about two or three series ago for the Vikings, did not return. They taped him up, hoping to get him back in and that was a huge part of this football game, as well as the Montana offense scoring when it had to. The Grizz moved the ball when they had to. Clutch play by John Edwards across the middle to Dane Oliver on third and long to keep that drive alive. And then the touchdown as the Vikings sold out on the blitz and Edwards able to dump it off to J.R. Waller, who got in for the go-ahead score. Of course, nowadays they are so careful with injuries, especially... Uh, pertaining to the neck area uh, we, we saw the play it, it, it really here's uh, Vernon Smith just picked off a Woods pass actually looked like he was trying to go down here but uh, so maybe took a knee to the head might have took a knee to the head hit the ground hard hit his head hard and we just hope he's okay 18 seconds left in this one as the trainers for the Vikings 10 to Antonio Jackson, who's had a good ball game. Jackson, in fact, the leading receiver tonight for the Vikings. Six catches, 121 yards, and now they have him sitting oh, that's up. Good. That's great. Antonio Jackson uh, from Portland, Oregon, a senior. Uh, David Douglas High School, and, and it's always great to see a player sit up like that. Uh, Might have uh, sustained uh, some type of head injury. Uh, we, well, like I said, we just hope he's okay. This has been too great of a football game for any team to lose one of their valuable players. And the crowd gives them a great ovation. And most of the crowd that's remaining is wearing the maroon colors right now. And uh, Tom, this is a little different than the last football game we did together. Of course, we did the Weber State game. We have five turnovers by the Wildcats. The Grizz just got to put it on cruise control. This was a battle all the way. Montana battled back from a 21-10 deficit. 
and uh, scored 13 unanswered points. A lot of heroes this evening for Montana. Uh, Snyder with his field goals. The defense when they made plays. J.R. Waller, 156 Dane yards. Dane Oliver. Dane Oliver, John Talmadge. Uh, it, the list goes on. But Montana dodged a huge bullet. Joe Glenn. <laughs> boy, oh boy. 36 and 3. He remains undefeated in Big Sky Conference play at two plus seasons. Gives a hug to Harvey Patton, former player. The last time that he and Harvey were on this field, they lost when they were both Northern Colorado Bears. Tonight, they're Grizzlies and they're victors. 24 to 21. This game, even better than it was billed to be. An absolute classic. 24 to 21, the Grizzlies conference title hopes stay alive. Their conference winning streak stays alive. That's the final. When we come back, we're going to wrap this one up. What a game. 24 to 21, the Grizzlies stay perfect on the year. The Montana Grizzlies celebrating with their fans along the sidelines. A win for the ages, 24 to 21. Tom Cotts here along with Dave Guffey. We just saw a fantastic comeback capped off when J.R. Waller got in on the screen pass to give the Grizzlies the win. And boy, oh boy, they're partying back in Missoula and across the state of Montana. They're partying here in Portland, Oregon. Well, you know, you're thinking, of, of course, me, I'm thinking about Stocks, Reds, the Mo Club, <laughs> the press box. Things are rocking and rolling. Hey, uh, you guys have a soda for Tom and me. We're going to be on the plane, <laughs> on the charter. We get back about 1, 1 30 in the morning. But uh, I said it earlier in the broadcast, Tom, and it just, if you're a Montana fan, if you're a Montana player, you just expect Montana to pull these things out because they do game in, game out. And talk about adversary, overcoming penalties. Jelani Harrison gets injured. So you, you got essentially one one back, one main back to go with, go to. And uh, John Edwards, uh, just, I don't know. It, Johnny Montana, it, it, I think just fits him perfectly because, uh, you know, you can't label leadership. You can't quantify it. He's got it. Something to be said about winners and championship attitudes. And uh, that championship attitude brought the Grizzlies back against the University of Idaho, and it brought him back here tonight in a game that meant so much, not only as not only in terms of winning streaks and conference championships, but just just laying it out on the line pride. Take a look at John Skinner. Skinny from Skinny Dillon, Dillon, Montana. Dillon, Montana. You know, you know who I think about too doing this broadcast is uh, the last the last time we were here doing this broadcast, Bob Hermits was doing it. I was helping keep stats. And uh, Bob, wish you could have been here for this one, bud. We were thinking about you, of course. And uh, you know, as we've talked about, Bob's uh, battling the illness right now. We're all pulling for him big time. Bobby, hey. This would have been a fun one for you to do, bud, because uh, but Tom and I had to suffer through it, and uh, we had our doubts, but I don't think the Grizzlies ever did. Well, that's the thing. You have to believe you can win every game, and the Grizzlies kept the faith throughout, and they kept their winning streak intact, and boy, oh, boy, they're going to keep smiles on their faces for another week. Tom Cotts, we're undefeated. That's it, Dave. Keep her going. Me and you, we're good right. luck for the Grizz. The Grizzlies 8-0 on the season for all of our crew, and for Dave Guffey, I'm Tom Cotts saying so long from the Rose City, the Grizzlies pull out the win in an all-time classic, 24-21. They stay undefeated on the season. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in two weeks for Northern Arizona. Good night. <laughs>